good weekend, all. I wrap in with your weekend edition of your financial market wrap up. And this is for Friday, the 12th of May, 2023, before I get anywhere. Moms, happy Mother's Day to one and all out there. Thank you. All right. I don't want to thank the market for the way that my trading went this week for my clients and for, for me too. Not good. All right. But it happens. Uh, announcement. I won't be here next weekend taking off uh, on a trip now that we've scheduled. And it's a good way to clean your brain and then come back all steady and fresh. Can't do this every single day, day in and day out with occasion, without occasional breaks. Only be gone two days, but it covers the weekend. So I won't be here for you next weekend. We'll pick up on it the weekend after. I'm just going to skip it. I'm not going to try to make good on it. All right. So we still have the issues of the debt ceiling. I think it was a positive that uh, the staff members recommended to the president and to the Congress, the congressional leaders, that uh, they not meet today. I think they're scheduled for Tuesday or so of next week, and they'll see what they can do. I fully expect that we will hear the word extension. I don't know if it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, doesn't matter. I think that's what you're gonna get. I doubt that those staff members have resolved all the differences that everybody has and saying we have a deal. If you believe that, okay, I'm not in that camp. But a deal to avert a crisis for an extension, it's an easy pill to swallow. And both the president and Mr. McCarthy lose something. Why? They both said they didn't want to do that. So now if they agree, they both lost something and they can get that done. Look for that to happen. That could add a bit of stability into the market. The next thing, we're still dealing with the wobbles, as I like to call it. I mean, any way you look at it, the CPI and PPI data are interesting. The PPI was weak. The CPI data, the headline number was a weak number. You're under 5% inflation, but you have the stickiness of the core. So you go back to the numbers on the jobs report and you say, okay, the jobs was strong, but how strong? If you run a three month moving average, it's not as strong as you think. You're losing, you're no longer at 500,000 jobs that you're adding. You're in the mid 200s, that's not the same, so less jobs. There's an argument there. Are we seeing wage pressures? Not really, but they're there. Are you looking at United Airlines? They're picketing at the airports now. So everybody wants a bigger share of this and that's still going on to a degree. But we did see in the jobs report that going in and just thinking you're switching a job and you're gonna get higher pays, not necessarily at work anymore. And certainly the galloping wages to just get anybody to come to you, it's not there. Are there still a lot of jobs out there? There are. Plenty. So that's going to keep the jobs market in, in good steed for a very long time. That isn't going to shake up. It can shrink a bit, but it's more what's going on with the other numbers, and I think that you're seeing a wobble. So I switched gears last night, and I told traders, I said, okay, this is the first time I'm writing this. I can see the argument to go to a pause in June, but I'm not putting my feet in that camp until I see the jobs report next time and the CPI. Once I see those, I will make my commitment. I can easily go there if I see wobbling and still some decline because then the Fed could say, just like a tanker at sea, you don't wait when you're within a mile of shore. It's miles out. Let's hold back and start now throttling back so we're glide in. That's how you do it. Well, that's how they want to do this. Will they get it right? Who the heck knows? They rarely do. You know that. But it's turning this big ship, and at some point, they'll make a guess. Pausing is not a decline. And that's where so many people have it wrong. A pause is a pause. You can go up. Doesn't mean you've done anything. And all you've got to say, so you don't put any egg on your face, is no, we want to pause here because we think we're going to be dropping. You don't say that. We want to pause to see what the lag effect is. It looks as though it's working. Is it grabbing enough holds where we don't have to goose it any further? That's a lot different than going from I'm going to pause to drop rates. Got the difference? And you set the market straight with what you say. Let the market argue. They didn't mean what they said. You always hear that. 
When you look at the S&P, the reality is the market has gotten over on a monthly chart, the 18-month moving average. It's been there for a little bit, a couple of months now, and just hanging there. It's not running to the upside, but it has got a bullish bias. You have a bullish bias on the weekly. You're over the 18-week as well. Whenever you're over it, my bias turns up, and it's a filter for how I approach the market. When under it, it's a filter, and then I'm in the bear camp. When I take a look on a weekly chart at the bar charts here, well, you can see very clearly that the 4,200 level has become a big resistance zone in the market. You can see that the trend is still up. You have higher lows, you have higher highs. That is still friendly in the marketplace as I see it. You can see when you look at the chart that the 100 week moving average is a big resistance number. The market's having great difficulty in getting beyond this. You can see that the market, when you look at Bollinger Bands, you haven't visited it since February because the 100-week average has taken the resistance on the chart. So while the trend is up, you hit it, you back away, you got to hit it, and you're not able to get through it at this point. And momentum is overbought, not embedded. So unless it embeds, which means this week, this week coming up, this market has to keep that. If the red line gets under 80, the odds favor you're going to correct and go back possibly to that 18-day average or lower. When I look at the Dow, it's nothing like that. In this particular chart, as we take a look, you have a market with a higher high and a lower low attempt here. There's nothing that I see there. When we look at the NASDAQ, you keep going up to the 100-week average with the same pattern, a lower low, higher high. But what's different on this chart is that you have the embedded reading and that takes the leadership. So until the red line is under, 79 on a closing week. The trade, I think, is buying the brakes, looking to get back to this 100 week and popping out of some of those trades against it. They replace using the Bollinger Band to do it when you've got a key moving average literally right on top of the Bollinger Band. That's what I teach in my course, which is on our website under, if you will, education. Now, you see these suite of things that I've got, the uh, Bollinger Bands, the swing lines. I use window envelopes. Outside days, I teach a course on that. Well, when you have an outside day, there's a way to put this on a chart. For those of you that use TradingView, go to our website and under software, the suite is there for you, okay? Just go to irapstein.com, software, you'll see the suite with TradingView. That's where you get it, okay? All right. Lower highs, lower lows, I'm in the bear camp here. Yes, you're oversold. Oversold, I don't think attracts new selling, but there's no reason on this one to even look at the long side of the market. Then we look at the bonds, and you've got a real issue going here. You have the pattern of lower highs, lower lows, which is bearish. But you're staying over the 18-week average of closes in red, which gives you an upside bias, and your momentum has gone flat in overbought area. Anything over 70 is overbought. It's a mess. I don't see anything to do. When I look at the 10-year notes, it's different. You have the higher lows, higher highs. Now, what has been at work here is how many times have you gone to that upper Bollinger Band and run out of momentum? That's what's going on, plus you're overbought. Overbought doesn't often attract new money. Why are people buying this? Because of two schools. Number one, fear about the debt ceiling. People want to own American goods. Even though we wouldn't be paying our bill, they run to that. Number two, what else? The pivot by the Fed. So when you go 10 years back, you're saying, ah, the worst is behind us. We're not going to visit these numbers again if they're going into the pause phase before the pivot down. That's what I think's at work. In the dollar index, this was, I think, all about the debt ceiling. Why else would the market take off that way? Suddenly, the market isn't looking at interest rates actually falling this week, which is what they did. This is, I don't know what's going on with that debt. I want to be in the strongest currency because if they sneeze, we're going to have pneumonia. That's what I think a lot of is going on, and that's what went on. Just think about it. Did you see the, this week, uh, the UK raised interest rates? day after the market comes unglued, okay? It's all part, I think, of what's going on there. In the Euro, same thing. They're talking raising rates again at the next meeting. We're talking, do we pivot to a pause? They're not. 
the word, just read about it. They, they are talking, we have to go another quarter. And what happens? It's adding weakness, not strength. I think it doesn't have anything to do temporarily with what the strength of the interest rate hike is. It's the fear of this debt. When we look at the Canadian dollar, it's just all over the board. I don't know what to do with that. I still am in the bear camp, very much so in the end. Momentum is still down. The trend is down. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you get to the lower Bollinger Band, but you are oversold. You have a reading under 30, and I don't think that attracts new shorts. Bitcoin's in a downtrend with upside bias. Remember, you're still over the 18-week average. You had a market that was embedded. It's lost it, so it's already attacking the support of the key moving average under it, be it the 200-week and the 18. In the differential of energies, there's one difference. Our energy secretary should resign. The woman is incompetent. Why? Let me tell you. In October, we're going to start buying oil next year between $70 down maybe to the 67. That's our target. March, we can't buy any oil. We have to do a lot of maintenance work. Uh, so we're not going to keep our word on that. We got to do all this maintenance work that has to be done. Uh, but we are going to continue selling our energy outside of the, uh, of the SPR because that's what Congress says you have to do. We could have bought our oil back, sold it in the market, and done a wash sale. We wouldn't do that. Now, yesterday, she comes out and says, yes, I think we're going to start buying in June. She doesn't know what she's doing. You can't believe her. The idea of an energy secretary is somebody you can believe in. Miss, nobody believes you. Your word is no good. It's that simple. Resign. Get somebody in there that has the guts to stand up to the president. Hey, I'm not going out there and doing this unless we're going to do what we say. She doesn't have it. When you take a look at Brent here, higher high, lower low, look at how the market's coming down to that. I don't see anything there. There's no trend to trade, and the same as in WTI. All right, what's OPEC going to do? Well, OPEC has its hands full with what's going on. While Nigeria and Iraq both had big reduced reductions due to a myriad of reasons, OPEC is called OPEC plus. And the liar in the plus right now is Russia. Every single shipping and data point you look at says they're, while well, they say, oh, we've reduced and hit our reduction target. No, they haven't. That oil's flowing out of Russia as they're feeding their war machine, and OPEC is part of it. They see it. They don't want to stop it. They don't want to rock the boat. Let them do it. And I, uh, two weeks ago, I told you, the world's been divided up. Russia's been given the Asian economies, and the rest of the world's dealing with the OPEC economies. That's really what is going on with the exception, obviously, of Iran oil, all right? But that's really what is going on. And OPEC is not your friend. They never have been your friend for real. They're a friend of convenience for themselves. They want to tax you. They want to figure out a way to keep oil instead of letting market forces run it, keep it propped up. That is called price fixing in any other place. But the open marketplace of the world. If this was in America and you had in each country was a company, they'd all the leaders would all be in jail for price fixing. That's what it is. Understand it. You got to deal with it. Okay, but every time you go to the down to the 200 day average in the Bollinger Band, you have found your support. Gasoline on the on the daily charts got to the 18 week average, 18 day average of closes and sold off again. This is just caught between lower and upper Bollinger Band. Now, in my report today, I put out for my uh, clients to get my full research the reason that premium gas is not going to approach prices of last year. It's very interesting. It has to do with all the additives and all and how we're able to buy them now in lower prices in quantity and why. And it's important reading. So you put it together. You come up with a game plan. But I'm doing a lot of technical talk. Can you keep up with what I'm doing? 
So our guide, and it's free to technical indicators, is yours, volumes one and two. I put this together with our friends at Futures Magazine to review with you how do you do chart lines? How do you work with moving averages? Which ones? Simple, arithmetic, which is the best way to go? Market sentiment indicator, they're there. I don't use it, but a lot of people do. Then the different types of Elliott, GAN waves. The price time is really the Arun indicator. Ag primer options, money management, so important. How do you work with all this together? It's yours for free. How do you get it? You go to our website under free offers. You can also move your cursor to the top here. There'll be an icon, give it a click, and that'll take you there. You can always call us, leave a message. We will call you back. I'm I Rapstein. You have a great weekend. Happy Mother's Day again, and I'll catch you all Monday. Take care.